greetings from Tiburon, California, just across from San Francisco. You can see the Golden Gate Bridge right over there, even though it's a little bit cloudy right now. You can still see it in the distance. And then uh, the greenery of rocks right here is kind of covering downtown San Francisco, which would be over there. But we'll, once we walk a little bit further that direction in Tiburon, we'll be able to see a little bit better picture of that. But anyway, today is Thursday, August 8th. 2024 it is 11:52 a.m pacific time and 61 degrees it's a little windy but despite the wind i'm still in a t-shirt and shorts and also making my debut of my poco traveler hat uh, decided to do that as some fun little merchandise well not merchandise per se it's uh my wife helped print it out at her place what i'm going to do is real quickly walk this way it says there's like a little monument thing this way it's about a three minute walk and then i'm going to backtrack and go through the tiburon area look at the birds like flying right above it's kind of cool you got a place here where you can go fishing There's also the Caprice Seafood and Steakhouse. And then Paradise Point. I don't know how far we'll get as far as seeing, like I don't know if we'll see any of the houses, but on the drive in, the houses in this area costs like when you look on Zillow like 1.2 million is the minimum and then you've got like 2.2 million 4 million and these are houses that aren't I mean they're right near the water so that's the luxurious part of them but there's nothing it's not like a super extravagant looking thing I mean something like that might be more extravagant overlooking the water Let me check the map here. Yeah, according to the map, I'm not too far away from this one little monument, and then we'll turn around and go back toward the downtown area. These little, I mean, up here is just the garage area. The house itself is down. Those on Zillow say like anywhere between three and seven million. All right, here's the thing I wanted to see on Google Maps. Just a little monument. It says it's called Lyford's Stone Tower, historical landmark. Let's see if they have a sign indicating anything about it. You gotta remember to take pictures along the way here. National Register of Historic Places. Now this area is not a public viewing area, that's someone's private house. Well, let's see. Dr. Lyford's Stone Tower, designed and built about 1889 by the San Francisco architect Gustav A. Burned and Benjamin F. Lyford, retired inventor. And then that, that's sort of uh, what I was talking about, like when you look at a view of what would be the nicer houses in the area. So 
now heading our way back. You also, when you walk different ways, you get a different view of things. You know, just walking toward the Golden Gate Bridge area, inward to town. Looks like one of these houses has a private staircase that you can take up. Hopefully the wind is not too much of a burden on this video. Being near the water, you have some extra wind. This is the second year in a row that we've done a little vacation to what I generalize as the San Francisco area. Last year on the first day I was here, I did a video with a rented bicycle in the downtown San Francisco area, went to like what used to be the Twitter headquarters. I don't know if they've officially moved. Then I checked out Oracle Arena, baseball field, and then just riding the bike through various parts of the city as well as going to Little Italy, seeing the Miss Doubtfire House, the Golden Gate Bridge Park. And then I didn't do a ton of other videos last year, this year, trying to see if I can squeeze in some some highlights in other nearby cities like this one with Tiburon. And then somewhere there's also like a ferry that I believe, I don't know where it docks from exactly, but I think it's, maybe it's that one over there. And then I think it goes to downtown San Francisco across the water. So this is where we started the video. We're going to keep on walking that way and actually see some of the restaurants in it. Places that are near the water but in what I would think of as kind of like the mini downtown Tiburon area. I just always love, I mean, this was similar to when I was in Seattle a couple years ago. I love it when you have from a distance the water and then across you can see the elevation differences of the houses on the hill and then better yet here you've got the Golden Gate Bridge and then it, as we keep going down you'll see downtown San Francisco. just hit noon here on the west coast. I'm going to try to get a quick selfie here. Well, this here says the Railroad and Ferry Depot Museum, so I guess that makes sense why that was uh, being shown there.
and now you're starting to see more of a view of the downtown San Francisco area. Yesterday we did a, well on Google Maps it would be an 11 hour drive, taking shifts, me and the wife. So that was the longest stretch I've ever been in a car. We'll beat the stretch where I drove solo to Las Vegas back in February of this year to see the Super Bowl. But with uh, we actually had an issue in the morning. We were trying to leave at like 4 a.m. Ended up leaving around 4.44 a.m. We had take, gotten a rental car the previous evening. And like 20 minutes into our drive, the front right tire said low PSI and it was already like 10 pounds down compared to all the rest of the tires. So we're like, oh, we didn't want to do, you know, do that long drive and risk getting a blowout or flat tire, completely flat tire. So fortunately we had to, go to the Salt Lake Airport and wait until they opened at like 7 a.m. to switch cars. So that was a little bit of a delay and then with a baby had to take some stops for that but it all worked out. Leaving early still got us here at a fair time like around 6 7 o'clock in the evening. So when you get to here the Golden Gate Bridge disappears beyond that area but you can see the boats docking more of the downtown area and the water I don't want to spend too much time since the, most of the video so far has been covering that area I want to go into the inward part here Tiburon was a railroad town I guess that makes sense why they have the museum that was back there got a nice little anchor here See if we can go to the semicircle. Yeah, it's a gr great shot right there with the anchor, the semicircle, and all the elevated properties in the background. So it's tough to decide which part I want to explore first because I don't know if I'm going to do like a full circle around everything. But what's catching my eye right here is the water that extends to this portion. So let me start off on that side after... I guess I'll grab one picture of this direction too, catching the anchor with the... background on that side. It seems like beyond that way it's more still like properties where people would be renting or living. No swimming, fishing, or boating here. Yeah, I think I'm going to end up crossing back to the other side because, I mean, there's stuff here, but uh, I want to, I see a lot of people walking that way and some cafes and other things. Got a little monument here, genuine, genuine hometown hero. Samuel Blake Chapman, Philadelphia A's, Oakland O's. All right, this is the corner of Paradise Drive and Main Street that we're at right now. Looks like you can scan here if you want to see the Tiburon 
ferry schedule. Talks about some of the places that you can explore on the Tiburon Peninsula. And then they've got a map here. So we're right here right now. Uh, yeah, it looks like most of the area that I want to see, and this is right here, because this is where we started off walking a little bit. There was that place where people were fishing. We saw that one monument up here, and there's the water. Downtown San Francisco would be here. Golden Gate Bridge would be along that way. And of course it says that it's not to scale. I inadvertently captured the wife <laughs> enjoying their uh, breakfast while I'm filming my video. <laughs> That's why I was laughing. But yeah, there's a gelato latte. Let's see here, we've got Malibu Farm over here. It says coffee, ice cream, and retail. Yima seems to be a clothing store. Nice rotating artwork over there. And then let's see, we have a lot of table side seating here. We got Waypoint Pizza. Who doesn't like pizza, right? I always try to try pizza anywhere I go. Della La Fe, it's another clothing place. Angel Island Tiburon Ferry, so it looks like if you want to take the ferry, you start heading down that direction. You also have Water's Edge. That one says a hotel, so I guess that's one of the hotels. I'm assuming those bicycles there are probably for hotel guests. If you stay there, I'm sure they allow you to check out a bike. We've got Sam's Cafe right here and restaurant. And the other side of the street looks like there's some more clothing related small shops. That one says fashion and gifts, although it says closed. Lil Sam's Market. I'm sure there's certain hours where this area would be a lot, have a lot more foot traffic. Keep in mind again, we're only here at noon on a weekday. Here's salt and pepper. Oh. Goldman Law Firm up here. You can imagine what the lawyer costs are, right? <laughs> so this is one of the parking lots if you're going like the yacht area. Corinthian Yacht Club. Got a main street parking lot over there. And then it looks like there's the back end of some places here. Oh, Cine Lounge, is that an actual like movie theater area? Yeah, the green area here is for walking. Cine Lounge showing Deadpool and Wolverine, Goodfellas, Twister, 2001 A Space Odyssey.
Oh, so it looks like they also do like food here. Cine Lounge, and you can now serving Tony's Pizza. Get a 12 inch Tony's Margarita Pizza, 20 bucks. And other items on your menu as well. Sip and paint with Bob Ross. Seems to be a winery tasting place there. Historic Arc Row. And you've got Pilates and fitness. Luxury hair accessories. So this seems to be one of the bigger parking areas if you're staying here, Eddie. Forgot to check when I was coming in what if there were how much the parking rate is, assuming there is one. So it seems like that staircase, I don't know. I was gonna say maybe I could get us back to the street level. Or maybe this one over here. Dog grooming creature comforts. Tiburon wine, Tiburon thrift shop. By the way, if you guys are enjoying this video, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe. We recently passed the 3,000 subscriber mark, which is thrilling. So you've got local spicery. Fiorla. And then look at those elevated places. front side of like the Tiburon wine. I wonder how much the rent is on shops like this. Says two hour parking daily. Well, that's what I was going to mention earlier. So the, the car rental, yeah, it had those issues, but we ended up swapping it out for basically the identical car at the airport. And that one was fine, but it's much bigger car than I'm accustomed to. Only took me a few minutes to get used to driving it on the highway, but I've never been good at like parallel parking, so to speak. And so anytime I go somewhere, I typically try to park in like in a parking lot, but everything's so tight here. So if I was driving, I would find it hectic to try to park that big thing on the street. Okay, let me try to dip into the roadway. I can see a biker coming through. It's interesting that there's places here that are shops too and like niche specialty shops because my expectation was like oh I'm probably gonna come come in this area and see a lot of restaurants and food places only so that's pretty neat that all those other spots are here imagine trying to drive up that too narrow winding road but it's a one way
All right, let's try to go back inward and see some more of the shops. Like you've got a United States Postal Service here. That's one of the things that's so cool. Like when I, even when you go to these real tiny towns, like literally everyone pretty much has a post office to some degree. But the buildings are never fancy. They're always pretty sedate. I shouldn't say never. I mean like most of the time they're just in regular run-of-the-mill buildings let me go back to the actual near the crosswalk area this looks like a grocery store given how many people are in the parking lot yeah it says Woolens Market Woodlands Market, excuse me. I could barely see it from the side earlier. Look at the cool bread and pastry options. And then quick shot of the store. I don't know, to me it's always kind of interesting to walk into a grocery store and just get a quick vibe of what ones you haven't seen before look like. Cream of rice, seven nineteen. All right, we're back outside now. Just another entrance to the grocery store, closer to where the produce would be. The Ark. Some mail service place and notary, and then there's a Wells Fargo down there. Oh, Diana looks like a has some little kids, kids toys. Ming's restaurant. Courtyard shopping. So they've got a little area you can walk into here. Rustic Bakery. And then more more little shops over there. Oh, this is the Rustic Bakery. Oh, here we go. It's always fun to see this stuff. You get a grasp of the prices. You got an $8 million property there. 995,000 is a lot cheaper on that one. But then 6 million, three and a half million. The comma's missing, but it's about 9 million on that, that one right near the water. 6.7 million, 6 million, four and a half million. So these ones are legitimately big houses so you can then with how close they are to the water I can understand that well look at that one right on the water 30 million crazy crazy
cars are just coming in so maybe I mean this area I assume is free parking basically although it does say you know boardwalk shopping shoppers only so they don't want people parking here and going over to the other shops I believe but I don't know how monitorable is that I mean the one uh, one of my wife's relatives was telling us that this area with how like high-end it is he said there's cameras everywhere so when people go in and out of the city so to speak they pretty much know who's coming in who's leaving I don't know I doubt they do something to, this, to that degree like monitoring like hey you better be shopping in this area but I'm sure that speaks to the safety level of the area if I had to guess and you know when you see all those properties here it's clearly a high-end neighborhood Yeah, I was talking earlier how the post offices typically don't get super fancy, but over there you've got a fancier looking CVS pharmacy building. back behind us and when I say behind us I mean the opposite direction when we were coming into town you could see there was some very pretty parks along the water that a lot of people were using here's a surprising looking thing it appears to be a business that's not in business. And this seems like prime real estate. An old deli. There are bus lines that come here. The 219 and the 619. 619 it says school days only. So the 219 is the one to, to keep an eye out for if you're curious and want to look at bus schedules. The San Francisco Bay Trail goes along this road here. That might be the trail that eventually, if you kept going uh, back that way, near that park and water area, it might be a dedicated bike trail. Or lead into that bike trail, if I'm having to guess. home care, nail and connections, hair studio, well, I mean, that is one thing I'll say. It doesn't matter what neighborhood you're in, even like if you're in a neighborhood that's not the most wealthy, people still want to get their hair done, so I can imagine in this neighborhood it's going to be no difference. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they're paying top-notch service and extra tips so that makes sense why you see a lot of those places here's the lodge at Tiburon another one of the places people can stay and there all are some street side parking here for two hour limits another building that says looking for occupancy now I know in well, last year you know downtown San Francisco was one of the places where the pandemic was obviously like over 
so to speak, but a lot of the work from home stuff had happened, so businesses had moved out. So I know that hit, that hit a lot of cities, but San Francisco in particular. From what I read online, some of the, a lot of that has recovered, but I haven't seen it myself yet. There's the fire district for Tiburon. And coming up ahead is pretty much where, not exactly where I started the video, but the water would be just up, up ahead. So we've circled most of this area. So I think that gives you guys a good grasp of Tiburon. In the next coming days, I'm going to try to see if I can cover some small other neighborhood areas and videos such as Novato or maybe Sosolito knife sharpening it says knife sharpening on there but I'm more looking at the little canvases I was hoping to see a little bit more window shopping This area definitely contrasts in the sense that it's not a, I wouldn't call this a tourist trap at all. Like you didn't see the type of things like, oh, little souvenir shops. This seemed like a place like, oh, it would be cool to visit as a tourist, but not, again, not a tourist trap, meaning the actual businesses that are here are probably utilized by the residents by a good margin. All right, so that will wrap up this area of Tiburon. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you next time.